Hi guys! This week I'm going to be painting a figure for you from the Frostgrave miniatures range. Now if you haven't heard about Frostgrave, it is a fantasy rule set that is pretty popular right now. They're releasing uh, expansions at a pretty quick tempo and uh, North Star Miniatures has been making uh, minis to go along with the game and those are in both uh, metal and plastic so they're really trying to make a big thing out of this. Uh, time will of course tell uh, how it actually works out. Uh, I have wanted to paint a Frostgrave mini for a while now because I just like the atmosphere and I'm just attracted to any and all uh, fantasy figures I guess. And so I was able to pick up this uh, recently. This is a mage figure. This is specifically called a sigilist. Uh, in the Frostgrave universe the mages are sort of at the top of the pecking order. They kind of run things and when you're playing the game uh, you usually have a mage figure or two running a war band, something like that. I was attracted to this particular model because it's a female figure and in the Frostgrave universe there really aren't very many of those. Uh, I might actually say disappointingly so I'd like to see more. But I found that appealing. She actually comes in a box set with her apprentice, which I am not going to be painting here. I'm just going to be covering the mage. You can see I've already done her face and hands, and I realize that painting uh, female skin is a little bit different than on men. So I will be linking here to a tutorial that I did where I cover painting female flesh in more detail. Uh, other than that, because Frostgrave is sort of this winter cold kind of uh, setting, I guess sort of a Game of Thrones like situation, I thought that I would be uh, using lots of cool and blue tones on this figure kind of to reflect that atmosphere. First of all, here are the paints that you're going to need to complete this figure. Even though I didn't cover painting her skin in the video, my selection here does actually happen to include the paints that you're going to need to do that as well. Now because this is a medieval environment and also a cold environment, uh, we see that our mage has lots of layers of clothing on. I'm going to start out here by painting the sort of under layered dress that she has on. I'm going to be doing that in kind of a light blue shade. So my base coat here is going to be a mixture of Vallejo blue uh, lightened a bit with Vallejo sky blue. And the highlighting process here is going to be pretty straightforward. I'm just going to start gradually mixing in more and more of the sky blue to lighten the color and just uh, focusing progressively on higher areas that stick out more uh, on the, this area of the clothing. I've made another mix here, again adding in more sky blue. I'm keeping my paint nice and thin and transparent and trying to build up the layers very gradually. Uh, I often will put on one thin layer, blend it out a little bit, and then apply another layer of the same color over top, uh, just but then to not go out quite as far, just to build up color a little bit. Uh, so this is that sort of that uh, second highlight. And then once I've finished with this, I'm going to do one sort of final highlight using just uh, pure sky blue. Uh, again, that's a pretty intense color. So make sure when you get to that stage that you keep it really, really thin. Now, depending on how much time and trouble you want to invest in this figure, you could just kind of leave the underskirt and dress as is and kind of go on with the rest of the outfit. But I've decided that I want to paint a little bit of a pattern here. And if you're interested in painting patterns, this is a great place to do it just because not too much of the area where you're going to apply the patterns exposed. So you don't have to worry too much about lines matching up or joining neatly and you can be you can afford to be just a lot rougher and sloppier because there's just these tiny areas showing. The pattern I'm going for here is just a sort of a simple sort of I guess a diamond pattern uh, with some sort of indistinct designs in the centers of the diamonds. What I'm doing is I've made a mixture here of sky blue and white 
I'm keeping it quite light as you can see and I've made sure the paint's real thin and I'm going to start out by drawing lines on the dress all going sort of in one diagonal direction and then when I finish with that I'm going to go back uh, and do the opposite diagonal direction so that you kind of just get diamond shapes. Pretty self-explanatory really. Uh, and then to finish off I'm going to take uh, the white and just kind of stipple a little cluster sort of dots or shapes in the center of each of the diamonds that I've just created and that can be you know sort of representative of some kind of little flower or brocade design it doesn't really matter very much and again because so little of the pattern is exposed here we don't really have to worry too much about being really really neat with the design I'm also going to do a little bit of light highlighting on the work that I just finished. What I'm doing here is just taking some pure white, which I've got pretty thin, and I'm just going to go back over some areas of the pattern to add extra emphasis. Um, as you'd expect, you want to put that white uh, on areas where the pattern would be getting a lot of light. You don't want to put the white in areas of shadow. So if you do it like this, you'll get brighter lines, you know, sort of on the tops of folds and creases, and it'll have the sort of the darker lines down in the folds, and that is going to give you sort of this illusion of shading. And you definitely don't have to do it everywhere. As a matter of fact, I suggest you do this sparingly and just really pick out the areas of the pattern where you're going to get sort of the most uh, bang for your buck by doing this. After finishing the pattern, I said I wanted to sort of emphasize uh, the shadows in her dress a little bit more because I just didn't think there was enough contrast but that's pretty easy with a detailed pattern like this. I just grabbed some Citadel Azurman Blue Wash and I'm just going to kind of lightly and smoothly sort of put it down in all of the creases and sort of uh, lower areas in her clothing or just sort of along the edges where the dress meets with another part of her outfit and depending on you know how dark you want the areas to be you can apply a couple of layers. The Zerman Blue is pretty intense so you probably won't need to do this very heavily and you want to always make sure that you're keeping your layers smooth and even because it's easy with washes to get sort of an unevenness which will kind of spoil the effect but just you know doing this just subtly and carefully is going to help just unify everything and it just adds sort of an extra depth to this sort of brocaded area. Now I'm going to move on to her sort of overdress robe, whatever you want to call it. And it's going to be blue too, just like her under robe, but it's going to be a much darker shade. So I'm base coating this entire area with a mixture of dark Prussian blue and black, which are both from Vallejo. My first highlight then is going to be just pure dark Prussian blue. Uh, the contrast at this point is going to be pretty small, so you're going to maybe have a little trouble seeing what you're doing, but you can see I'm just going to kind of focus my paint on the tops of uh, all of the sort of wrinkles and folds in her dress and kind of let it just blend out or not even paint down in the creases. And you don't really have to actually blend too much when you're doing this just because the contrast is so low, it's not even really necessary to blend it together. You may want to apply a couple of layers of this paint too, just because when you're working over a super dark, almost black shade, you can generally build up uh, sort of just stronger paints, just or just stronger color, I should say, just by applying a couple of uh, subtle layers. My next highlight here is just pure uh, Vallejo blue, just straight blue. Um, and I'm just doing the same thing. Again, you can see that the contrast is more than it was before, but it's still pretty subtle. So again, you won't have to spend too much time blending. I'm just doing it the same as I was before, kind of focusing on the same areas, the tops of wrinkles and folds, and anywhere light would be hitting. And I'm just applying it sort of to the centers of those areas and kind of blending it out or just applying less on the outer surfaces. And again, I will go back in a second time after I apply the first layer just to brighten it up a little bit. This is my final highlight on the outer robe and I just mixed a little bit of sky blue into my regular blue and I'm sort of just applying it almost as an edge highlight. Uh, I'm keeping the paint nice and thin, applying it quite lightly and really blending it out a lot. Um, and I just find that this gives that extra little bit of needed uh, sort of contrast. Uh, I want this to stay a nice, really dark, deep, rich blue, but you still need to sometimes add just this little extra bit of lighter sort of color here and there. And when done just sparingly, it has a really nice effect. 
Next, I'm gonna be working on this fur trim. You can do this in various colors. Uh, white or gray would be also nice, but I decided just to go for uh, brown because it, it's deeper and richer, and I like the effect it gives. I'm just uh, gonna apply a base coat here first using uh, Vallejo Chocolate Brown. Now I'm going to highlight the fur trim, and I made a mix of several colors for this purpose. So I took my chocolate brown, which I used in the base, um, and then I mixed in a bit of Vallejo cork brown to lighten it slightly. And then finally I took just a hint of uh, Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet, that's a bright red, so you really only need a hint, and I added that in, which made the whole brown sort of a reddish color. And you can see I'm just going to kind of lightly apply that to the surface of the fur, sort of applying a couple layers to get it sort of brighter and lighter in some areas and just leaving a little bit more shaded in others. Because this fur has got a lot of texture, I'm now going to apply a wash to it. Uh, I'm first going to use a Nuln oil and I'm going to apply that more in sort of the darker sort of shadowed areas of the fur. And then in the areas where there's more light hitting, I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade instead. Next, I went back over the fur with that red color again, just to re-emphasize some areas where I knew a lot of light was going to hit, but I kept that very light. Now, sort of those sort of ruffled sleeves she's got, and also the trim on her various robes, and also her headdress, I'm going to be painting in sort of a creamy white shade. So I'm going to start out by base coating all those areas very carefully with Vallejo Buff, and it, there's nothing, there's no real um, exciting technique I'm doing here, but you just have to be careful because there's lots of areas you need to, you know, make sure get covered and you want to make sure you don't mess up your existing paint job. Also, remember, because we're applying a very light color over a very, very dark color, the coverage on the first pass is not going to be very good. And even though I didn't show it here, uh, I actually applied several layers of this color to the model so that I could get, you know, a good smooth finish before I proceeded with highlighting. Next, uh, I wanted to get even more sort of depth and color and sort of contrast going on in those areas. So I'm going to apply a wash of Seraphim Sepia. Now this is kind of a light orangey brown, uh, but we don't want it to be too heavy or dark, especially on the big flat areas. So make sure that when you apply it there particularly that you you apply it in very smooth, even thin layers and try to prevent uh, your paint from really pooling because that's just going to be more difficult to correct in the future. Once the wash is dried, I'm going to go back over these areas again with the buff. Uh, it's a little bit thinner this time than it was before because I'm not trying to base coat and I'm just going to sort of apply it lightly here and kind of build it up. Um, and this is because, of course, that Seraphim Sepia color that we've got now is quite a bit darker than we wanted. But by applying this sort of semi-transparent lighter color over top, we can get some sort of interesting tones going. But we can also keep, we can just kind of dull down the effect of the wash a little bit and get sort of some more kind of subtle shading going on. And you can also, of course, go ahead and apply the buff in uh, several layers in places that you are planning to make brighter and uh, lighter in the future. My next highlight layer in these areas is a mixture of buff and white. And I'm just doing what I did before. I'm going back over all of the areas and I'm using this lighter color to emphasize all of the areas that I want highlighted. So as usual, the tops of all the wrinkles and creases in her outfit. And I always, again, start in the center of those areas with the lightest color and sort of pull it outward so that it gets thinner and more transparent as I move outward. I'm going to finish the trim and headdress off now uh, using just pure white. Uh, and the white is, of course, quite transparent paint. I have thinned it enough so that it flows easily, but you don't have to thin it a lot because it just will go on transparently. Uh, and, and I'm just, again, refining what I just did, focusing on sort of the center of, uh, of these sort of light areas and just pulling it out from there. And you can apply quite a few layers of white to these areas and not have to worry about the color on the model really looking pure white because it's just, white is just so transparent. And I want this area really to look quite white. I don't really want, I, I mean, I want, what I want here is really a white color 
but then with a slight sort of yellowish linen tone to it. That that's what we're going for here. So you know you probably you want it to really to be uh, more white than you do yellow for sure. Next, I'm going to move on to uh, base coating sort of some of the wood and leather areas on this figure. I'm using uh, Vallejo German Camouflage Black Brown to do this. Uh, mostly, I'm going to be focusing on her belt, but also her shoes and sort of the end caps on all of her scrolls. I'm going to go back over the scrolls later, but I think an extra dark brown base here does not hurt. I'm then going to just continue quickly highlighting these brown areas. I'm first going to go over them with chocolate brown and I'm going to keep that real generous. Um, and then after that I'm going to go ahead and mix a bit of the cork brown into my chocolate brown and I'm going to use that as sort of a lighter uh, kind of edge highlight like on the toes of the shoes and the edge of the belt just to show a little bit of wear. Uh, and then finally I, I will go ahead and take just pure cork brown and go over it again and that's sort of sort of the final extreme highlight. Uh, you can even go in again if you want and put a little bit of Iraqi sand or a mixture of Iraqi sand over it again if you really want to emphasize wear, but you do not have to do that. I'm also going to use that cork brown while I've got it out to base coat some of those little ropes that she's got tied to the front of her belt. Now I'm going to be painting the paper and scrolls, and she's carrying quite a lot of paper and scrolls. She's got the one she's holding open, she's got several on her belt, she's got sort of a, a seal type thing tied also to her belt. Uh, for a base coat on these, I am using Iraqi sand, and this is going to be a very similar process to what we did on her headdress and the trim on her uh, the rest of her clothing. It's again a light color over a very dark one, so you're going to need to apply several layers to get a nice thick base coat. I'm also going to use a very light amount of the Iraqi sand to add some highlights to that sort of rope belt, so just touching sort of the high areas and just finally picking out the cords in that belt. Just like I did with her clothing, I'm going to apply a light, even wash of seraphim sepia to all of the scrolls and pieces of paper that she's carrying. Once the wash is dry, I'm going to apply a highlight color, which is a mixture of the Iraqi sand and a bit of white. Uh, it's quite transparent, so I can build it up really nicely here. I can start out thin. Uh, and just sort of use that to smooth over the wash and then build it up uh, with several layers to get sort of brighter, uh, more highlighted areas. I'm also going to use a little tiny bit of this again on her rope belt just to sort of get that a little bit more finished looking. So you can see I'm just going to go back over this several times until I feel like I I've sort of covered up the base sufficiently and sort of built up enough sort of different layers of contrast in that paper. Now my final step on the paper is to go back over everything with thin down white. Just exactly the same as I did on her clothing. I'm just going to start applying it in a thin layer uh, very transparently and then just going back over and again building it up just like I did with the previous layer until I'm kind of happy with the brightness on different areas. Uh, we basically used exactly the same technique on her clothing and on, and on her paper. The only real difference is that sort of the base tone is different. One has buff and one has Iraqi sand and those are slightly different tones. One is more yellow and one is more brown. And even though it is very subtle, you can see there is a clear difference between those sort of those two different areas on the figure. Now I'm going to finish off the sort of wooden ends on all of those scrolls. I'm just taking some chocolate brown here as a base coat. Nothing difficult. You just have to be careful not to make a mess and be a little bit neat. Then in order to highlight, I'm just going to mix a little bit of Vallejo khaki into my chocolate brown and sort of uh, use that as an emphasis on sort of the end balls on those scroll on those sort of caps and along sort of the turned edges. And then you can finish off finally with one really high highlight of pure khaki uh, applied thinly I should add but that will give the wood a sort of distinct uh, sort of yellowish uh, brown tone that will be uh, just will look nice but will not really sort of look exactly the same as all the other more warmer brown tones that we've already used on this model. Now some of the areas that are left I thought I would do in kind of a reddish tone just to have some variety and get something warm in there to contrast with all the blues we've already used. Uh, I'm using Vallejo Black Red here to base coat her feather, 
um, the seal she's got there on her scroll at her waist, and also that book that she's carrying. I'm basically putting them all in that sort of black red shade. In order to make a highlight for those areas, uh, I took the black red and then I mixed a bit of the cork brown into it again, and then finally added some of the Evil Sun Scarlet again from Citadel, uh, more definitely than I did before when I was highlighting her, the fur on her sleeves. I want it to be a clear red, but that's really nice, particularly in that cover of the book she's carrying, because it'll look like sort of a nice reddish brown leather. It, it will be a little dull, or it won't be just quite so in your face. And I'm going to use that particularly to highlight the book. Oh, and then on the feather and on her uh, seal, I'm just going to go ahead and highlight with uh, flat, you know, Evil Stun Scarlet. Uh, I'm going to apply it thinly and build it up in a couple layers. But I, I, ideally, what I want here is for those things to really be a bright red, and then for the book to end up being just a slightly more muted color. Because the feather has a lot of sort of creases and things down it, I'm going to apply a wash of cardboard crimson to it to help define it, and also to the book, just because I want it to be a more muted looking piece. There aren't very many metallic areas on this model. They mostly just include some of the hardware on her book and sort of this necklace she's wearing. I'm going to just paint those all in gold. So I'm base coating the areas using a mixture of German camouflage black brown, of course, and a little bit of Vallejo Air gold. Uh, once I'm finished there, I'm just going to go ahead and highlight them quickly using pure gold. Now the figure really could be done at this point if you want, but for me it was just too tempting because she's got this big scroll she's holding open and she's got a pen in her hand and it seemed like it would be appropriate to put some sort of magic symbol or some such onto the scroll. So that's what I'm doing here. I've got some Vallejo black green here and I'm just thinning it down. I'm going to use it to very sort of carefully uh, freehand and sort of a mystical looking symbol. I, I have no idea what this is. I'm just kind of making it up as I go along. You can see I'm trying to make sure that I have some areas of design are thicker and uh, some areas are thinner. I'm then just going to build up a little bit of extra depth in the symbol just by uh, edging it with a bit of German camouflage black brown and in some areas also a little bit of German camouflage uh, bright green. It, but you're not even going to see the bright color too much at this point. I'm now going to attempt just to get a little bit of a magic glowing effect going. So what I've got here is some of the German camouflage bright green. And I've made it very, very, very thin here. As a matter of fact, I use mostly sort of the um, thinner medium here from Vallejo just so that it would be very transparent. And I'm just going to start applying it around the edge of the figure. Like you can so it sort of gets an outline and so it kind of looks like it's glowing. I then mixed another shade where I took the... Um, German camouflage bright green and added some buff into it which made it kind of yellowish and I'm applying that sort of outlining around the outside of that glowing effect with that color and that kind of helps just build a little bit of a transition into the whole thing. This is also a place where if you want you can play with a little bit of really basic source lighting. That is to say that there's a specific thing in the figure that's generating its own light and the light is bouncing around and, and sort of hitting other things and to do that it's really easy here I'm just taking that light uh, transparent green I made you can see I've been applying it to the bottom of the scroll both the paper rolls and just the wooden rolls too and that makes it look like the lights hitting those areas and it's sort of creating this glow on everything uh, and, and because it's transparent it's really easy to build it up without totally losing the color underneath and I'm, again I'm using that yellow green mixture around the edges just to kind of uh, shade it out into the existing color. I chose to uh, then refine the design even further here just by taking white and mixing in just a hint of the German camouflage bright green and you can see I'm now uh, drawing inside the figure here uh, just because I thought leaving it dark it didn't have enough uh, definition there was just wasn't enough sort of different colors going on so I'm just building it up and it's kind of playing with it here trying to get something that I like a little bit better you can even add some of the white sort of outside sort of to, to, to emphasize the glow effect or put some real thin lines that you can see here along uh, the areas where the light is supposed to be bouncing and hitting the uh, sort of the, the scroll rolls. Uh, it's really up to you here what you do. It's just, you know, you just kind of, I'm just kind of playing around trying to get an effect here that I find uh, looks nice. 
So here is our finished uh, Frostgrave Sigilist Mage. Um, I had a ton of fun painting this one, and I think there are a lot of techniques here that you can use on a variety of figures. Uh, since Frostgrave is kind of low medieval, you could use a lot of these techniques to paint just straight medieval figures, actual historical figures, because the clothing is very similar in many ways. And even if you're not going to be painting female figures, uh, the clothing and the colors and a lot of stuff I'm doing here is also going to be very applicable to men's clothing from that sort of period, either fantasy clothing or medieval clothing um, as well. Um, so I, I hope you enjoyed this one I, as much as I did. Uh, if you did, uh, please do like it, uh, share it, uh, leave me comments with what you thought about uh, my painting. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you have not gotten a chance to do so already. So that is all for now, and I will see you next time.